Hello, I'm out here on Elkajon Bay uh, with my buddy Bill. Uh, I met Bill through a video that I made and he saw it and lives right here and so he called me up and I've been out here several times since talking with him and I just wanted you to meet Bill and he can tell you more about the sinkholes than I did. So tell us a little bit about the place here. Well, um, sinkholes are formed by water uh, dripping through limestone and it settles in a spot and the more it drips the more it erodes the rock around it and uh, then it, it caves in and uh, there are three sinkholes in the bay here one's 15 feet one's about 18 feet and the one we're sitting in right now is over 90 and um, uh, it's this whole area in here is full of uh, things like that that happen and you know it's uh, it's a very unique area because in this 90 foot sinkhole in fact the other ones and one thing or another there is a type of uh, of uh, moss I guess you would call it that grows in here that's um, very unique to the area and Grand Valley College came out here a professor and his uh, kids and they used to uh, I would bring them out here in my pontoon boat and they would do research out here and we put ORV cameras down in the hole here and and looked around in one thing or another and this this moss it grows is actually purple and uh, you know along the sides of the the hole here you'll see areas where there's springs coming in and this purple moss is there and it's waving all around it kind of kind of different and uh you know a lot of people have come out here and looked at this and one thing another and it's uh it's the type of area that is very unique so there's i guess there's a sinkhole up by middle island in the big lake but uh these are the only ones that are right here so um it's just a very beautiful area and it's been a privilege to live here and and you know i i respect it i have a neighbor that i wouldn't dream of doing anything out here unless I talk to him first about it so <laughs> He's kind of my guiding light in one thing or another. So I like to uh, I like to be here. I like to be out in the lake and the lake itself is is beautiful because there's seven or eight islands out there and and uh, you know it's a good place to boat. It's a good place to fish and that's what my wife and I like to do. And I would say that uh, I've been a very fortunate person just to be able to live here so my life is good how far across is this sinkhole this sinkhole is approximately i would say a hundred yards across and you can tell it's a sinkhole because over here to the south there are trees that are sticking up in it now they don't have any limbs on them anymore but they're actually sticking up and uh you know you can see them down in there out here in the middle, there's absolutely nothing. The bottom of this thing is just mud, mud, mud. Um, in fact, there's a, there's a brand new snowmobile down in there that during the winter time, so they were people were riding around the edge of the sinkhole, and a woman uh, went through the ice, and her snowmobile ended up in the sinkhole, and they've never been able to find it. So it's uh, that's a bad day. That's a bad day. Yeah, because. The guy went ahead and ran up to the house from here, which is probably a half mile away, and and wanted me to give him a ladder and come, run down here, back here with him and uh, get the ladder so the woman could crawl out. Well, she crawled out herself and uh, was was safe, uh, but uh, you know I was too old to be running down here with the. <laughs> 20 foot ladder so I just I just didn't do it I told him I wouldn't do it but that was an exciting winter night for us so it's uh you know you got to respect this area in here because on land there's all kinds of 
caves and cracks and things like that, you know, and if you're out here uh, exploring or hunting or anything, you could uh, you could go ahead and, fall, you know, stick your leg in a crack and break your leg pretty easily. So, you got to know where things are at, and it's... It's, it's, it's a big area, you know, there's, uh, there's state land on the north side of the bay and there's township park property on the south side of the bay and, and uh, there's, I think, about over 300 acres here. So, it, but it's, how can you go wrong here, you know, I mean, this is so pretty. It, it really is just beautiful. Yeah, so, anyways. Uh, we get a lot of eagles. We get a lot of, uh, um, you know, water birds, you know, seagulls, terns. It's fun to watch the terns because they'll just circle around and circle around, hunt for fish, and then all of a sudden they just fold up their wings and poosh, down the water they go, and they, they come up with a fish in their mouth. I don't even know how they can see them, but they do it. And... One year when I came back in here with the pontoon boat, I uh, I saw seven eagles coming in. So wow. it, it's really a great area to to see wildlife, see deer out on the islands, and and uh, <laughs> uh, my wife and I were out in the boat one time going out to go fishing, and way out there in the lake, you know, there was something swimming, so. I drove the boat over by it, and it was a squirrel swimming in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> I've we never had, seen I've seen deer swimming, but never a squirrel. Yeah, it was a squirrel. He was heading to Round Island. So, huh. and we get otters in the winter time, bobcat. Uh, my wife has a picture of a bobcat dragging a dead swan across the ice. Oh, cool. And uh, any bear here? Oh, the, <laughs> we have bear on our porch. <laughs> I'm not sure that's where you want a bear, but... Uh, you're absolutely right. It's not where I want a bear, but my wife thinks it's really cool, and so, you know, I try to discourage them, but the problem with the bear is, is the bird feeders, and the bird feeders are, you know, they're, if you're going to see the birds, you got to have bird feeders, so... Right. Too big an area, so... And this area out here... When we first bought the property, that used to be an island, and then uh, lake level dropped. In one year, it dropped almost three feet. That was 1988 when we built the house up here. And that uh, uh, that was cool, but when the water dropped, it was like from July till you know the rest of the year, it was just bloody hot and very uh very still and the water just evaporated away or ran out one of the two and, and that fall when the salmon started their runs and one thing or another the salmon try were trying to get in here and it was so shallow that their backs were sticking out of water oh wow yeah so and now it didn't become an island again with the water level so high? It is an island again. Oh, it is again, it's okay. It's not a real good island because <laughs> there's so much vegetation on the far side there. But oh, okay. It's, it's definitely an island again. And, you know, you never get tired of looking at things out here. No, it could. And my wife is an amateur camera buff, and uh, she just... You know, she's always looking, always looking to see something. One year we had a, um, we had a lot of swans in here, probably about 50 of them, and it was winter time and it iced up more and more and more in here because this sinkhole right here does not freeze up; it stays open all the time, and the ice in here is never safe, so. Uh, but the, all these swans were here and they got iced in and so they went to the shoreline because there's a lot of springs along the shoreline to the west here where the houses are at and um, she uh, uh, the swans were eating the vegetation that was still growing in those uh, springs and 
uh, problem with that was is that w water that was coming out of those springs was high in iron content and the swans got iron poisoning from it. Oh, weird. And uh, so they were dying left and right and we had a lot of wildlife opportunities at the time from otters eating dead swans and a bobcat that's the one that my wife got the picture of dragging a dead swan across the, the bay and then uh, uh, we saw uh, a mink who was trying to kill a swan it was you know very weak and one and this this mink would uh, the swan would swim and the, the mink would swim up behind it and crawl up on his back and bite its neck and one thing or another and it finally killed it but and when the swans would die you know then the coyotes would come in off the high ground and they would grab a swan that over in the corner of the bay there by our house the woods in there was full of swan carcasses and lots of feathers Sounds like a episode of Wild Kingdom here all the time. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it's not unusual to see, you know, two or three otters at one time out here swimming and stuff. So it's a very, very interesting place. And being that I've always been kind of a wildlife kind of person, it was, it was interesting to, you know, see the development of things. So, I like it. I do. I'll never find another place like this again. But, you know, time marches on and I'm getting old and it's uh, getting hard to get up the hill there where the house is at. We're the highest building on the bay here. So, I think we're going to, you know, eventually we'll sell the place and move to another lake that doesn't have a high bank to go up and down. <laughs> So. All right, well, let's go explore the, uh, the sinkhole a little more. Okay. All right, we're back up at the house here, and Bill's got this big crack in the earth running right through the front yard. So can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, this was the thing that drew me to the property because uh, I, uh, I came up here uh, and decided that uh, I liked the area, and I thought, well... I gotta find some property. So, and, and I did, and I found this, and it was uh, reasonably priced. And I uh, took a look at it, and where the cracks at, it was full of trees. And when I saw the crack, I thought, well, being a rock guy, I thought, this is me, you know. So I, uh, I, I went back and bought the property. And what I know about the crack is, is that, uh, I think the crack was formed when the rest of the stuff out here in the lake was formed because I think it was one gigantic, uh, um, uh, it was one gigantic uh, void in, in the limestone and when the ice age came I think what happened was the pressure from the ice pushed down on it so much it caused it to cave in and made this crack here because this crack is pulled away from the high ground here. So um, it's been, uh, you know, things always move around here. There's, you think it's not moving, but it is moving. And uh, there's uh, a stone over there in the side yard that when we first came up here, it was only lifted up about four inches and now it's up about uh, probably pretty close to a foot and um, the neighbor down the road he had, he came out to go to uh, breakfast one morning in town with his wife and he backed out of the garage and he happened to look to the left and there was a big hole in the yard about four foot across and so he got out and he took a look at it and the hole was conical shaped because it was all dirt but down in the bottom there was a crack in the limestone which all the property around here um, has is is all limestone based so he uh, uh, he told me about it and I had one of those uh, cameras those underwater cameras at the time so 
I went ahead and went down there with it. We dropped it down the hole. Now this crack was over 30 feet deep and uh, down in the bottom of it, there was water moving through it. So I dropped it down in there and looked and you could see where the crack went off through his yard to the south and there was um, uh, that put it kind of uh, underneath one corner of his house. Of course, the crack isn't very wide. It's only about, oh, maybe 10 inches wide at the top, but further down it gets wider. So, uh, do things move around here? Yes, they do. I mean, you can't feel them move, but uh, they do move. And um, to me, the crack is, is beautiful, you know. Look better if I clean some of the trees out of it and one thing or another, but it's it's a beautiful uh, it's a beautiful thing. So especially from the south end, if I think uh, you have some pictures looking up through there, and it's 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 a pretty thing. But to me, it reminds me of Canada, uh, Ontario, Canada, up toward uh, uh, from the Sioux up to Wawa. There's a lot of beautiful country up there. That's all, but that country there is all granite. And so, uh, like I say, the, the, the guy I bought it from said that it was a, uh, a defect. And I certainly don't think it's a defect. <laughs> no, so. it's, it's really cool. Yeah. There's, there's caves down at the one end there, right? Yes, yeah, there's, uh, there's two caves that go off to the north. And then there's uh, another cave that kind of comes in to the south. And we know critters live in there because one year we had a bobcat out here that was staying in the crack. We knew it was because, you know, it was coming out on the ice and, and uh, uh, catching some swans that were, uh, uh, they were uh, sick from iron poisoning from the springs. And uh, so we know, you know, that they live here. And plus we've had, well, we used to, put fish out on that hump over there and a mink would come up there and he would grab the fish and he would just drag them out he was it was winter time and he was so excited to get some easy pickings so he would drag them out and he would take them down the crack and he'd hide them in one thing or another and and we've had uh i don't know if we have bear in around here real close or if they use the crack but we had several incidences last spring where we had bear right up on the, the porch out front. And, and, you know, a lot of people like bears. I don't like them that close, but there we're here. And lots of coons. I mean, we've had, four, you know, families of coons here. Um, everything that you can imagine comes through the yard. My wife can't can't have a flower hardly it's got a blossom on it because the deer eat all the flowers off so uh nice bambies but they're a pain to my wife so and this morning when she was out rooting around in her garden out on the corner of the house out there we have a lot of snakes and uh she does not like snakes and there was a big garter snake in her flower garden and it crawled up the the corner of the house into the vinyl extrusion on the corner of the <laughs> house. So, always something happening here. It's never dull. <laughs> so you said one of you, your son uh, explored one of the, the yeah, caves a little there's bit? Yeah, uh, uh, there's a cave over in the corner to the left over there. And he was, it, we knew we could look through. It was more like a tunnel. But on beyond that, maybe 10 feet, there was a place there was like a big riff and uh, he was young, I think he was probably about 12 years old, but he crawled down in there and he said that uh, it just kept going and going as far as he could see. So, um, and I told him, I said, well, I didn't lose nothing down there, so I'm not going down there and look. <laughs> good, good plan. <laughs> well, it sure is pretty. Yeah. So. As right. potential, you know, I used to keep the crack clean and one thing and another, and I don't do that anymore because I'm getting old. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it'd be a lot of upkeep keeping it keeping it clean down there. Well, I had a I had a hedge trimmer, the electric one that you plugged into an extension cord, and uh, so 
I would plug it in and go down there and I'd whack down all the stuff in one thing or another and then I cut the extension cord in two, three times <laughs> in one, two, you know, in one episode down there so we don't do that anymore either. Probably a good plan. Yeah. All right. I thought about spraying it, but nah, not going to do it. Yeah. Well, it looks, still looks nice. I like it. Yeah, I do too. Well, thanks a lot for, for showing us around. You're more than welcome. And uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.